In this section, we are going to talk about scanning larger networks. In particular, we are going to talk about host discovery and performance optimization. It is very important to know how to adjust all those timing parameters to save valuable time when scanning larger networks. We are going to take a look at how we can optimize various Nmap timing parameters to refine our scans with the goal of increasing scanning performance without sacrificing accuracy. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to perform host discovery and how it works, and we are going to see the differences between local and remote network host discovery. Host discovery is the first step for any network reconnaissance mission, determining those hosts on the network that are alive and then moving on to check if they might have interesting entry points. Depending on whether you are a network administrator or penetration tester, your needs for host discovery might differ. Network administrators might be more interested in systems which are running a particular service, while infosec professionals usually need to scan every IP address on the network they are testing. Nmap, being a really versatile tool, offers many ways for host discovery. Some of those techniques can also be used to bypass firewall and intrusion prevention systems that might be blocking certain types of network traffic. Let's start by conducting a simple host discovery by using Nmap's default ping scan. We're going to scan a class C network, which means 256 hosts in total. For this scan, we're using Nmap as follows. Nmap-SN to specify the ping scan and then the IP address range of our local network using CDR notation. We also specified the packet trace option to watch all the packets being sent and received, and minus N to prevent DNS resolution. We need to point out something important here. The default ping scan that Nmap performs differs between local and remote networks. When Nmap scans hosts on a local network, it performs an ARP scan by default, while for anything else it sends an ICMP echo request, a TCP SYN packet to port 443, a TCP ACK packet to port 80, and an ICMP timestamp request. The reason for this is that an ARP scan is an almost always faster and more effective way to determine live hosts on the local network. ARP is served for Address Resolution Protocol and is used to map IP addresses to hardware addresses used by the data link protocol. When a computer needs to communicate with another host on the same local network, it first needs to know the remote computer's MAC address. Assuming no previous IP datagrams have been exchanged between the two hosts, the former host that only knows the remote computer's IP address broadcasts an ARP request message on the local network asking everyone there that has that IP address to reply with their MAC address. The remote computer that has that IP address assigned then sends an ARP reply back to our host, indicating their MAC address. This is also a very fast and reliable way to determine which hosts are live on the local network, and that is what Nmob does in this case, as you can see in the live network traffic here. Those hosts that are indeed alive on the local network will have to reply with their MAC address. On the other hand, if we specify a ping scan for remote hosts, the packet sent will be quite different. We specified ping scan for three remote hosts using packet trace, avoiding DNS resolution, enabling verbose mode, and the region option that will make Enma print white reported the result for each host. Nmap will send an ICMP echo request, a TCP SYN packet to port 443, a TCP ACK packet to port 80, and an ICMP timestamp request to each of the three remote hosts we specified to determine if they are alive. You can see in the packet trace that it first sent the ICMP echo request, then the TCP SYN packets to port 443, then the TCP ACK packets to port 80, and finally 
the ICMP timestamp request. Two hosts had already replied in the meantime to the first ICMP echo request with an ICMP echo reply, indicating that they are alive. They also replied TCP SYN packet to port 443. One of them replied with a SYN ACK packet, also indicating that its port 443 is open, while the other one replied with a TCP RESET packet, indicating that the port 443 is closed. If they hadn't replied to the first ICMP echo request, Nmap would have used those replies to determine that they are alive. Nmap finally does a second attempt to assess if the third host is alive by resending its four probes. Since it does not reply to any of them, Nmap finally reports that the host is not up. If a host does not reply to any of these four probes, it does not necessarily mean that it is not alive, however. For example, the host Socro.org, which happens to be my personal site, is up and is running a web server on port 80. However, there is a firewall that dropped all those Nmap probes. Notice that if the Nmap probe to port 80 had been a TCP SYN packet instead of a TCP ACK packet, my host would have replied, because the web server is running on port 80 and is listening for new TCP connections. In the case of the TCP ACK packet, however, does not initiate a new TCP connection, my host's firewall determined that it was not part of an already established connection and dropped it. The reason for Nmap sending a TCP packet with the ACK flag set is that often simple firewalls that are stateless, so as not to take up many resources, are only blocking incoming TCP SYN packets. In those cases, a TCP ACK packet would bypass the firewall. In this video, we learned how to perform basic host discovery with Nmap to find live hosts in local and remote networks. While Nmap provides additional techniques to perform host discovery, we're going to see them in action in real-world scenarios in future sections.